Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shen Plays. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play. Our first here in El Dorado, which was just released yesterday. We played yesterday exploring some of the new mechanics in the game, which are pretty cool. Especially things like exploration and searching for El Dorado. Awesome stuff. Uh, we won't be able to do that today in this LP because this LP, unfortunately, or fortunately, is starting in the new world. And if you start in the new world, you can't do all the... Uh, fun like search for El Dorado. That's all European stuff. So today we've created our own custom nation called Vinland. And this is one of the major changes in the game is you can create custom nations. You can create several of them actually. You can just scatter them all over the map wherever the heck you want them. And uh, oh there you go. Thousand people. Welcome. <laughs> you can scatter them all over the map. You can create as many as you want. Like if I hit custom nation out, I'll say, do you want to modify Vinland or do you want to add a new nation? I'll say, I want to add a new nation. And we can just, you know, click down here in Florida or whatever and give him Florida. And there you go. You can call it Florida. And you can say done. And then you can just delete that if you want. Modify. Delete. Are you sure you want to delete Florida? Okay. And Vinland is still up here. still exists. We're going to select Vinland. There you go. So this, this new system of nation creation, you can just put them anywhere you want. Anyway, today we're going to get started on a new Let's Play. And this will probably not go to 1821. It's just to explore some of the new game stuff. And we're going to play as, uh, well, believe it or not, we're playing as King Leifer Eriksson of Vinland. We have Vinnish ideas, which include, but are not limited to, morale of navies, naval tradition, and missionary strength. We also have cheaper ideas, inventory combat bonus, discipline bonus, trade bonus, a colonist, core creation cost, and morale of armies. We are of the Norse religion. Go, go Norse. And one of the nice things is, or maybe it's nice, maybe it's weird, I'm not sure, but any custom nation you create, whatever religion you pick for them, all of their lands will be that religion, no matter where. So even if you even if you create a custom nation here in the middle of the HRE, you can make them Shinto. It doesn't matter. Whatever religion you pick, all of your land will be that religion at the start of the game. So we're going to be Norse. And the settings that we have are no bonuses, normal difficulty, lucky nations are turned off, terra incognita, of course, dynamic names. We are Norwegian culture, so hopefully we'll get some Norwegian names showing up. Uh, we're using 200 point normal difficulty for our nation creator and when you're creating a custom nation you can use up to 800 on very easy or down to 50 points on very hard 50 points you can still make a pretty good nation uh, normal nations at the start of the game you can also set normal you can also set nations to random which would be weird we, we considered doing random but the problem with doing random nations is it would simply mean Europe may not even colonize on random nations because you wouldn't have Castile, Portugal, England, and France in the same spot. And if they're in different spots on the world, they'll still get their wonderful ideas wherever they are. But, I mean, if if Castile is a horde, they're not going to be colonizing. So, you know, stuff like that. So we're on normal nations, so that we make sure we actually have colonizers. But we have gone random tax values. And this was put to the vote on Twitch chat. And, I mean, I get, we'll, we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. Um... Uh, Hopefully we don't wind up with like 18, 15, and 20 base tax provinces here in the New World, because that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, the reason why the base tax in those really high base tax provinces in Europe is that high is because they had, you know, existing infrastructure. They had a little bit of industry. They had a little bit of farming. They had a little bit of, you know, government. They had existing stuff to make the province worth more, and people living there, too. So in the new world, hopefully we won't wind up with too much high base tax, but we're going to try random base tax and see how that goes. There's a, there is a third option called flat base tax, which makes every province in the world the same base tax. I, I didn't want to do that because that would mean all of the land in the new world is worth just as much as the land in the old world. That, that, that doesn't make sense. The new world, always, the land should always be worth less. Anyway, let's go ahead and get in as our custom nation of Vinland. Oh, that's right. We're Eastern Tech Group, by the way. We went with uh, Eastern Units because they look awesome. They have badass helmets on their soldiers. And they also have uh, a little bit longer teching time, which I think makes sense. So when the Westerners come, we're going to be a little bit behind them. Awesome. So here we are. We have Vinland. And uh, I kind of wish we didn't have all of this 
land discovered. But when you create a custom nation, the part of the world that they can see is based on a distance from their capital. So unfortunately, we get to see a whole lot of these natives, and I, I don't know. We'll just pretend they're not there for now. My brain can't pretend that way. Anyway, what do we do? Well, we have some trade ships, and we exist on the uh, Gulf of St. Lawrence, so we might as well patrol that. We also have to start with some heavies. I think I'm just going to delete those because they're very expensive. Or maybe we can sell them to someone. Um, I wonder if I can sell them to you guys. You guys want my heavies? Can I sell you some heavies? No. They have no... Yeah, there's, there's nobody who can buy my heavies. No, I'm just going to delete them. I hate to just delete them because it's just money down the drain. But, eh. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to spend... And I don't, I'm not going to, like, mothball them until Europeans show up and sell them to them. Screw that. We also have some transports, which I probably do don't need. So I'll delete those, and we'll just go with trade ships for now. Alright, excellent. So how much base tax do we wind up in our capital? We have uh, one base tax capital. Perfect. Four base tax placentia. Seven base tax Beothook. Wow, that's a little high. One, three, one. Now that's, that's more reasonable. One, three, one, one, three, and three. Okay, so that's very reasonable. But seven base tax here, that's kind of high. Nah, we'll live with it. But <coughs> random base tax is kind of hard to tell what's going to have what. For instance, how much is Manhattan? It's one. Normally it's four. How much is Kanoi? It's two. Normally it's four. So that's good. Some of the land is worth a little less. Some of it's worth a little more. It all, you know, balances out. All right. Cool. Let's take a look at our elect. I mean, our despotic monarchy here. We have King Lee for Erickson. He's a 202. And his son Thorgil's another 202. We are, um, shall we say, 500 years in the future from when Vinland was actually in existence, but whatever. Who's going who's gonna to call us out on being a little bit wrong? I'm not going to worry about unrest or taxes. I'm going to go for prestige. And let's see, spy offense? Nah. Go for... Yeah, let's go for military tech. All right, cool. And hopefully we get to show off some of what El Dorado has to offer. Printers cannot own ships or make ships. You cannot sell them. Uh, prototype, they can, as soon as they get level 2 uh, Diplotech, they can build, or you can uh, get military access at their bases, at their docks. You can get naval base access. So I'm pretty sure uh, they have the opportunity to own boats at level 2. Don't quote me on that. Okay, we found some grain. We found some wine. Oh, that's right. All of our provinces start with unknown goods. So I guess we'll discover some goods while we're here. And wow, we found some wine in Vinland. That makes sense. Why not? Found some wool. Okie dokie. So as the Norse religion, this is a new religion. This is in EU4 now. You have the Norse religion you can use. You also have Jewish. There's, they added some new religions. We get to pick a deity. And we're going to get a new deity uh, for every king that we get. So deities are Snotra for build cost and cheaper tech. And the build cost is only for ducats on buildings. It does not reduce the uh, monarch points you spend. You have Njord, or Njord, I think it's Njord. Trade bonus and goods produced. We'll probably go with that to get the extra income. Tur, who gives you lowered unrest and more discipline. Very good during war. Tor, leader shock and fort defense. Also good during war. Freya. Taxes and manpower, probably won't be using that one. And Odin, legitimacy and core creation cost. So obviously if you're just getting out of a war, that's going to be good to save some admin points. But for the most part, I think I'm going to go with money. I like the little uh, Viking dragon boat they have there too. No, we won't find gold up here. Gold will be in uh, South America. It should be around Brazil and also Central America at Mexico. But you won't find gold in Canada. Also, what's missing? Well, Better UI 2.3 is out, and Better UI 2.3 is working pretty well. Seems fine. It also makes your military windows much larger, so you don't have to scroll through your military windows anymore, or at least not as much. Uh, map mode buttons is not out yet, so the, the mod that shows all the buttons across the bottom of the screen, which is so useful and I love because it never covers up the world map, that one's not ready yet for... Uh, for this patch, so hopefully it'll be ready soon uh, in future videos. Uh, I also have thick borders and recolored waters turned on, 
that mod's working great. Everything looks good to me. Found some grain, okay. And those are the only mods that I have right now. So what did we get? We got fish, cloth, wool, 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 grain, grain, wool, and wine. Nice. What did these guys get? They got some fish, they got trade or naval goods, lots of fur, tobacco, more tobacco, naval goods, grain, and cotton and cloth. Okay. Yeah, lots of fur up here. We're gonna go on we're gonna wanna get a lot of this fur for sure. I think once we have enough fur, the um, trading in fur event happens or whatever, where it increases the cost of fur by 35%. It's why Leif Erikson named it Vinland. It's because he found grapes. Yeah, I believe you. It's too bad we didn't find grapes in our capital. We found wool, but whatever. There's grapes nearby. Any good missions? I'll probably go for these fortify missions. Fortify missions are really nice because look at what you get. You get extra manpower in that province. And that's permanently. It's not just temporary. So we have a mission to fortify our capital. All of our provinces start with level one forts. And that's uh, kind of crappy, kind of crappy. But yeah, if you pick provinces that start as uncolonized, then they will have level one forts when your nation spawns. So we'll have to go ahead and build uh, level one forts everywhere. Or level, level two forts everywhere. Which I think we can do at tech three, right? We should be able to, yeah. Yeah, level two is before before tech two. Or before tech three. Yeah, we're good. I don't look like you imagined me. Why are you imagining what people look like? That's just weird. I'm going to go ahead and lower our army army maintenance because we're not using them for anything. And yeah, we're just going to go on fast forward for a while. Oh, man. The life of a Viking. Can you imagine being one of one of the, the group that went over with Leif? Holy shit. Go into the new world with like no clue what the hell's out there and you get there and there's like like wow there's some people. Well it looks like we're not gonna be raiding and pillaging these folks. <laughs> we thought you looked more like a coffee pot. Well I do have a, a bit of a beer gut, but I don't look like a coffee pot. You imagine Craigasm. Oh, okay. Why does EU4 look weird? Well, are you drunk? I'm not going to lose 25 prestige. I'll fight the rebels. Fund the army! Woo! -hoo. How much money do we make on trade anyway? Ah, 2.7 ducats. Not half bad. And hopefully soon enough we'll be able to um, trade down here. Right now our merchants don't have the range. Oh, we do. Oh, we already are. Right, but we don't have the range to go beyond it. So hopefully soon we'll get our merchants up to Hudson Bay, and we can start pushing down from there, or maybe into Ohio. But right now they're out of range. Our range is... What's our range? Oh, will it show me here? Okay, our range is 200, and this is 228 away. So we're close on Hudson Bay. What about down here? Uh, range is 200, and it's 307. So that one's going to take a little longer, but it's also more valuable. So hopefully we'll get that soon enough. Are we in Inu yet? Yes, we are. All right. I just spawn him. I'm not going to make Leif a general. I'm not going to get a general. It's just for two, two regiments, whatever. And they have no general of their own, so it's all good. Fight me in the woods, you cowards! Man, those rebels, they rolled pretty well, didn't they? All right, that's enough funding. That's enough money for the army. You guys don't need to eat. You think I look like Walter White? Uh, okay. I'm not sure if that's flattering or creepy. I guess that depends if you think Walter White is attractive. Anyway, we have enough money for our fort. Let's go ahead and do that. Hooray! Forts give bonus to missionary strength. Every single fort level gives you a small bonus to missionary strength, which is fantastic. It also increases the supply, which means you can move more troops through that uh, province. Although on the coast, supply limit is really not a problem most of the time. And it also increases the fort level, which means it's better at defense. And that's usually what people think of when they say, in, in, you know, building a new fort. They usually think that, oh, well, it makes it harder to siege. True, but you can't really ignore the, the, um, the supply limit. That is probably the best bonus. And the missionary strength can be useful in certain situations, like if you're trying to convert Rome or London or something. The missionary strength is useful. But um, 
for me, the biggest thing about forts is not the fort level uh, or the, the fort defense or the missionary strength. The biggest thing for forts is the supply. Because when you go away from the ocean, so inland tiles, like let's say you have you know these provinces over here. This stuff with no sea access, it doesn't have very good supplies. So the force limit's gonna be very low, like 11 or 10 or 12. And that's just normal. Inland provinces have low supply limits because it's harder to get goods there. It's harder to get all your supplies there. So what do you do is you build forts and it increases the supply limit. So typically my empires will have big, big forts inside. Uh, Lombardia, Tyrol, uh, Vienne, any of those places that don't have you know sea access will have big, big forts so that you can march you know 150,000 troops there and not take attrition. And then on the coast, you really don't need it because the coast has huge supply limits anyway. Shen Connery, oh god. Oh god, now I, now I want to watch Celebrity Jeopardy again. <laughs> you drink water from this. A leather glove. What? <laughs> I do like the color we chose. We went with a color that was similar to Norwegian because of our culture. But I didn't want the exact color of Norway. We, we picked color 15. Color 17 is like the exact color Norway. I didn't want that because just in case Norway colonizes, you know, I don't want to have the same color. All right, so we got extra manpower in Takum Cook. Great. What's our next mission? Improve prestige, create a proper fleet. The fleet one will take a long time because our, yeah, we have a ship limit of 16. Uh, what's the bonus that we get? Some tradition. Uh, I think I'm just going to cycle missions. These are some terrible missions. Be better missions, damn it. And if you want to cycle a mission, you just take a mission and then you cancel it. And then you have to wait a year and then you can take a new mission. Can I collect in Hudson Bay? No, we don't have the range for Hudson Bay. We're really close. We don't have the range for Hudson Bay. We got to tech up a little bit. You avoid building forts because you want your supply limit low, so invaders take more attrition. Uh, old man, it makes sense. It makes sense if you want to have a corridor where you build a corridor through your nation of really high forts. Then you can march your armies through that corridor, and then when the enemy comes in, they don't really care what the supply limit is. The enemies will siege up everything so on those on that corridor provinces they'll they won't take very much attrition but on the other provinces you can just leave them with low forts yeah that makes sense i don't see why not this is the sound a doggy makes moo what <laughs> hi head blast all right let's get some more trade ships going I'm not going to build forts right now unless I get a mission for it. Fort missions are the best. And uh, it really makes sense, especially on coastal provinces, it makes sense to not build extra forts until you get a mission for it. Because missions for forts are the best. You get more manpower. Did we choose Norse? We sure did. What god did we choose? We went with... What's he called? Njord. The bonus for income. I love, I love money. Nobles demand privileges. Lose money or gain unrest. I'll take unrest. Because we don't have any unrest. No, we're fine. Yeah, we have a hundred... Having a hundred legitimacy lowers your unrest by three. So, we're fine. Also, we're a despotic monarchy, which lowers unrest as well. So, we're good. We're fine. When did I suddenly become popular? I'm not popular. I'm being hosted by Das Kut, Kitten Cutie Cat, and Arumba. So, people from those channels are watching. And I could go ahead and focus Diplo. Our king and, and our heir are both 202. And when you're setting up your nation, you can choose whatever age and stats you want for your king and your heir, which is nice that they let you choose all this. Um, obviously, it's more expensive to choose uh, better stats. But we went with really crappy stats because we wanted to have um, a little bit better ideas. And picking Eastern tech, when you're setting up a nation that's not in Europe, and you want to be Western, for instance, it uses 150 points to be Western. If you want to be Eastern, like we did, it uses 130 points. So it really takes up a lot of your points that you can spend uh, picking your tech group. Which makes sense. Alright. Patrol. Patrol. What's interesting is we, we have the trade range to put a merchant in Chesapeake Bay, which is great. Look at this. England and Burgundy are already getting money from Chesapeake Bay. Hey, Paradox, that doesn't make any sense. 
England and Burgundy don't know about Chesapeake Bay. They shouldn't be making money off of it. Anyway, we have the trade range to put our merchant here. However, we don't have the ability to patrol here. I wish I could patrol here because there's, you know, nine ducats here. Or the potential for nine ducats. But I can't patrol here. My only options for patrolling are Hudson Bay or the Gulf of St. Lawrence. I wish I could patrol down there. I think what we need to do is get a province down here, and then we can patrol down here. All right, the plus two revolt risk is already done. And what we could be doing is getting some relations up. Like maybe we should get relations up with the Huron or something. I don't know. Our diplomats are doing nothing, but does it really matter? Nah. We can't marry anyone. There's no one that the Norse can marry. What's it say for marriage? Oh, their government doesn't allow marriage. Maybe we can marry. I don't think we can marry Catholics, but maybe we can marry... I don't know. We are we are considered a pagan religion, so maybe we can marry other pagans if they allow it. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Stuff just flows with the currents. Oh, so you're saying you're saying the natives are taking their goods? Like, who, what is you? He produces tobacco. So you're saying Powhatan takes his tobacco and he puts it in the Atlantic Ocean, and his tobacco floats over to Burgundy and England, and that's why they get trade power here. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. You are right on. Yeah, Leonard Nimoy died today. Very sad. Yep, I can't patrol down there. Isn't that silly? Get some hot Indians for our son? Oh, yeah. We will definitely go find some Indians. I hope you mean Indians in India and not the Native Americans. <laughs> Oh, goodness. It's time to be politically correct, everyone. But they, they seriously did call them Indians, because they, they didn't know any better. Fortify Beothook. Now we're talking. We're getting missions to get more manpower. It's fantastic. What a good bonus. Because Beothook's manpower is only 84. <clears throat> so once Beothook has a bigger fort, it'll be over 100. And that's awesome. Okay, the natives are migrating. Have fun with that. If, if, if any of these guys migrate up towards our border, we can fabricate on them and eat them. Nom, nom, nom. Yeah, Micmac's getting closer. Hopefully, Abenaki will also come closer. It's like a slow migration. Come on. Come on, little boys and girls. You know, I'm just going to pretend that we don't know they exist. Oh, I can fabricate on you now. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Violence must be had. The Vikings never stood still. He just moved his capital, so he is absolutely fucked. Yep, you did. You wanna... No, he's not. He has no alliances, no nothing. And once we eat him, we can eat Abnaki. Oh, beautiful. And then we can start sending trade ships down to the fucking Chesapeake Bay. Yay! What a good plan. I'm so smart. Ah, oh, damn it. Abnaki went the wrong direction. Holy shit, there's 14 base tags there? Okay, well, that's, um... Oh, shit. Lose stability or lose prestige. Alright, that's kind of bad that that's 14 base tags. Holy crap. And this is 8. Well, I guess that's what random base tax gets you. When I was looking at all the nations, like, I saw he had three base tax here. I'm like, oh, good, it's normal. Nope, 14 base tax. Well, I know who I'm eating next. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. Well, there's, there's random base tax for you. What do we have up here, anyway? Because this could be random, too. This could be anything. 14 base tax down. That is nuts. And as far as I know... The way random base tax works is every province in the world, all their base tax is added up to a total base tax. So the world has X base tax. And then, whoa, there's 10 base tax here. And then with random, it divides the base tax up randomly, but the base tax has to be the same as the total, as the normal, oh, Alabama's got eight, as the normal base tax. Well, there's 12 in, in uh, 
Chatot. And 11 over here in Tamuka. All right. Well, the Europeans are going to love Tamuka if they get their 8 base tech. Jeez. Okay, this is more than I expected to be here. That's what she said. 9 base tech. Oh, jeez. All right. So this is... Oh, 10 base tech. Jesus Christ. This is more base tax than I expected. What I don't like about this is I think this means places like... Oh, God. Another 10 base. I think this means places... Oh, 11. Oh, my God. So much base tax. I think this means is places like Europe and China are going to have a lot less base tax than they normally would have because it, look, we just have so much over here. Uh, that's, um, I don't know, disappointing. It's weird. All right, let's go kill some natives. That'll make me feel better. Just go kill some natives, Shen. You'll feel great. You'll feel good. Lots of good. Ooh. Sicknit is seven base tax. Ooh, okay. Let's kill some natives. Sounds fun. Fun that army. Oh, now I can patrol Chesapeake Bay. For some reason, now I can suddenly patrol Chesapeake Bay. I don't know why. Um, Alright. So I'm just going to push everything I can up north. Because we're already collecting most of the trade in Gulf of St. Lawrence. And once we eat, eat, once we eat Micmac, we'll collect more. Uh, do I need a general for this? Probably not. His pips will be garbage. Eastern Tech actually starts with pretty good pips. What units do we have at the beginning? We have Bardish Infantry. Um, that's fine. I think I will switch over to the other infantry type, though. Because this one gives you shock. I like shock. Yeah, there's... Oh, man. The colonies are going to cost a lot to settle. You're right. We are very poor. Um, that's a very important point. The poorer you are, the harder it is to colonize. If you've ever played a Native American, it can be very difficult to colonize if you don't have any money. Whereas uh, Europeans don't really have that problem because they have a ton of cash. All right, you've had it too good for too long. Time to die. Get him, no leader. You're the best. And he has a zero shock guy. Great. You're toast. You are so toast. Crushed him. Crush like bug. Oh, wow. Even with 32 power here... We are only barely getting any trade out of here. Really? We're only pushing 0.6 to the north. Wow. But we are collecting two ducats. So we're fine. What's the plan for colonizing? We're probably... Well, like you said, we're probably going to have to go for a lot of the cheap provinces because the high base tax ones are going to be too tough, too tough to colonize. The more base tax they have, the more expensive they are to colonize. It's true. It's very true. Yeah, Ireland might have a lot of base tax. Who knows? I mean, it's random. Who knows? Who knows what base tax Europe has? Do the send and return colonist trick. I think we're going to try to avoid that trick. I know you can do it. I think it's really cheesy. I'm not going to do it. There. So let me tell you what the trick is. Let's say we put our capital in Staticona. So if we put our capital in Staticona... We'll be able to send a colonist to Mysuna. Mysona. Mysona. Whatever. Let's say we can send our colonists there. It takes him four days to get there. As soon as he arrives, ten colonists arrive at the colony. Pull him back. Send him again. Four days later, ten more colonists arrive at the colony. Pull him back. Four days later, or send him again. Four days later, another ten colonists. So within one month, you can have, you know, 30, 40, 50 colonists arrive. I'm not going to be doing that. It's really cheesy. But you can do it. Friend, I mean, England might win the Hundred Years' War. Yeah, I'm going to be very curious. When we finally go look at, at Europe, I'm going to be very curious what the hell it looks like. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, we have a free merchant because we don't have the range to use him, unfortunately.
They patched it so if you send them multiple times in a single month, twice, return, twice back. It takes away 25 colonists when he leaves. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, Prototype is saying that they have fixed it so you can no longer do the colonist spamming trick. Good. I didn't like that trick. I thought it was really cheesy. Because it was really cheesy. I thought it was cheesy because it was cheesy. Oh, I see why you thought that then. Hmm. Yeah, if these natives don't improve relations with us, we'll never be able to get an alliance. Oh well. Oh, you did. You did. I think we'll be um, raising... What's it called? I think we'll be raising the uh, autonomy on every province we take. We were playing yesterday, and we tried the tactic of just lowering autonomy everywhere. Oh, there's actually no unrest. Alright, fuck it. We tried the tactic of lowering autonomy on every province we took. I'm not going to raise it because there's no unrest. And the problem is, we wound up having no manpower because we were just constantly fighting rebels. Alright, so let's go ahead and fabricate on Abnaki. This guy with 14 base tax over here. God damn, that's a lot of base tax. We're going to go eat him next. He's got seven troops. We might want to get a general for that. Mm, nah, fuck it. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. What are you worried about? It'll be fine. Could I explain my nation to those who just tuned in? We are Vinland. Uh, you can look it up on Wikipedia. They were a settlement that... Um, the Vikings put in North America. It d didn't do that great. <laughs> but it existed. It was a thing that existed. Woo! So, we are reenacting the Vikings in North America. Supposedly, they were here in this area of Newfoundland. But I'm sure from there they also went elsewhere. And, um,. They were somewhere around 900 AD, something like that. So it was like, we're, we're like 500 years after the fact. But that doesn't mean we can't reenact it. People still reenact the Civil War. That was a long time ago. The core cost on this is going to be high. That's okay. We have lots of points. I am okay with that. Vinland settlers made it to Maine. I'm not surprised. Vinland got killed by the Little Ice Age? Eh. I would say it's more likely they got killed by the land being somewhat inhospitable. And not really having the kind of... Not really having the kind of environment where they can do their... Their whole cultural thing, which was, you know, raiding and pillaging and looting. They just couldn't really do that over here. There wasn't an option. What happens when you have... A CB on a one province minor native and they migrate. Well, you still have your claim on that province, but wherever wherever they go to, you won't have a claim there. So that's why it makes sense to do uh, fabricate claims right after the natives move. That way they won't be able to run away from... Um, they won't be able to run away from your claim. Okay, we got our claim on this moron. You know, eat his face. I eat your face. I'm torn on whether to take, um, I'm gonna get the tech for sure. I'm torn on whether to get a dude, a general, but I don't think I will. We won't need it. We just, we just teched up, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'll let the end of the month tick to get our morale back up, and we'll declare war. Mr. I have no allies, because I am a loner. Oh, you're gonna die. You're going down. Downtown. Double penalties for us, and he rolled a 9, but we should be able to pull this out. Yeah, we're fine. Although he won't squish, will he? He's going to retreat. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I will drop a dude follow you, kill you, and squish you. Make you dead. Oh, you going down. Oh, oh, he already died to the natives. Whoops. He died to the natives. <laughs> now I'm fighting the natives. Oh, well. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Stupid meme. 
That was not a very good movie. Uh, do I want to tech up or save points for coring? What's the coring cost? 211. I'm going to tech up. We'll core eventually. There's no rush. There's no rush to core. We'll core eventually. But yeah, that's going to do it for this first episode. I hope you enjoyed our first glance here at a custom nation made in U4 El Dorado. I've been Shen. You've been you. Come back next time. We're going to continue playing as Vinland and Leif Erikson. And we're going to lay waste to the new world because fuck them. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Europe looks like. It's going to be a fucking mess. I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.